It began beneath the scorched sands of Morocco, a place long considered a crossroads of ancient civilizations, but never the cradle of our kind. Until now. In a remote dig site near Jebel Irhud, archaeologists uncovered something that would shock the scientific world. Fragments of bone, charred by time, embedded in sediment older than any Homo sapiens fossil ever found. This wasn't just another relic. It was a direct challenge to everything we thought we knew about our origins. The team brushed away the dust, only to realize these weren't outliers. They were clues. Clues to a story that started far earlier and in a completely different location than textbooks ever imagined. For decades, East Africa held the crown as the birthplace of humanity. But what if the real story began west, in the arid shadows of North Africa? A skull, a jaw, tools shaped by ancient hands, and DNA, older than belief. Could this site in Morocco hold the true beginning of our species? And if so, what else have we misunderstood about where we come from? Now, one question echoes louder than ever. Have we been looking in the wrong place all along? For more than a century, the story of human evolution has been anchored to East Africa. The Great Rift Valley, with its fossil-rich soils, gave rise to discoveries like Lucy and other ancient hominins dating back over three million years. From the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania to the Awash Valley in Ethiopia, the consensus was clear. This was where Homo sapiens emerged around 200,000 years ago. Scientists called it the Out of East Africa Theory, a foundational pillar in anthropology. But in 2017, a series of fossilized remains found near Jebel Irhud, Morocco, shook that theory to its core. The bones, belonging to at least five individuals, were dated to an astonishing 315,000 years ago. That's over 100,000 years earlier than any known Homo sapiens fossil. And it wasn't just the age. The facial structure, brain case, and stone tools suggested something revolutionary. These were early humans. Not quite like us, but not entirely different either. Suddenly, the neat timeline collapsed. Could our species have emerged not from a single origin point, but from multiple regions across Africa, simultaneously evolving and interacting over vast distances? The Moroccan desert, once seen as peripheral, was now a focal point in the biggest rewrite of human history. But what exactly had they found? And how could these fragments change the entire map of human evolution? It started with a mislabel. In the 1960s, miners near Jebel Irhod stumbled upon what they believed to be a Neanderthal skull. It was briefly noted, catalogued, and forgotten. Decades passed. The site, dry and remote, remained largely unexplored until a team led by paleoanthropologist Jean-Jacques Hublin returned, determined to reopen the mystery. What they found buried beneath layers of flint and ash would unravel decades of scientific certainty. The first real clue emerged from a dusty layer of reddish sediment, a nearly complete adult skull, jaw bones, limb fragments, and flint tools shaped by hands that knew purpose. But this wasn't Neanderthal. The face was too flat. The jaw, too modern. The brain case, however, remained elongated a strange blend of primitive and advanced features. These weren't just early humans. They were potentially the oldest known Homo sapiens ever uncovered. Dating the surrounding sediments revealed something even more startling, 315,000 years old. Was it a one-off anomaly or the first puzzle piece in a much bigger picture? To confirm what they had found, the team had to go deeper not just into the ground, but into the past. Layers of sediment were peeled away like pages from a forgotten book. Led by Jean-Jacques Hublin and researchers from the Max Planck Institute, 
The scientists combined archaeology, geology, and advanced dating techniques. They used thermoluminescence dating on heated flint tools, measuring the last time they were exposed to sunlight. The result? Tools as old as 315,000 years. That wasn't just a surprise. It was a scientific shockwave. But tools alone don't rewrite history. The bones had to be tested. CT scans revealed a mix of traits. Modern flat faces, small teeth, but elongated skulls. Were these Homo sapiens or something else? The evidence didn't fit neatly into existing boxes. The team faced fierce skepticism. If this site truly held the earliest members of our species, why hadn't more similar fossils been found elsewhere in the region? And yet, everywhere they looked around Jebel Irhod, they found more tools, more signs of an intelligent hand. The mystery deepened. Could this be proof of a pan-African origin? A complex web of evolving populations across the continent, not a single Garden of Eden. The dig site in Morocco was now a battlefield for a new theory, one that might redefine not only where we came from, but how we became human. To solve the puzzle, scientists needed more than bones and tools. They needed genetic proof. Though ancient DNA is rarely preserved in warm climates like Morocco, researchers turned to proteomic analysis, studying surviving proteins in the fossils, enamel, and bone fragments. The results confirmed what morphology had hinted. These were early Homo sapiens, not another hominin species, but they were unlike any modern humans alive today. Their features suggested that our evolution was in a straight line. But a mosaic of traits developed over vast distances and timescales. Even more revealing was the broader comparison. Geneticists cross-referenced the findings with DNA from modern African populations. Some genes found in West and North African peoples seem to echo traits from these early fossils. Could this mean that ancient lineages from Morocco still echo within us today? Meanwhile, the tools found at Jebel Irhud matched those from sites scattered across Africa, from South Africa to Ethiopia. This pointed to cultural diffusion, or even migration and interbreeding among early Homo sapiens populations separated by thousands of kilometers. The implications were staggering. Our species may have developed not in one place, but across the entire continent, gradually converging over millennia. The Morocco discovery didn't it just push back the clock. It shattered the idea of a single origin point. Humanity, it seemed, wasn't born in a moment, but forged in a vast continental crucible. Three fifteen thousand years ago, the Moroccan landscape was unrecognizable. Lush grasslands rolled across the horizon, teeming with game. Rivers flowed through valleys that are now barren. Here. In this forgotten Eden, small bands of early humans gathered around fire pits, shaping flint tools with astonishing precision. They hunted gazelle, processed hides, cooked meat, behaviors we once believed emerged far later. These people weren't just surviving. They were thinking, planning, living. Their faces were familiar, not quite like ours. Their skulls more elongated, their brow ridges heavier, but unmistakably human. These weren't creatures of instinct. They were ancestors, gazing into the same sun, walking the same earth, carrying the first sparks of language, culture, and curiosity. Across Africa, similar groups were rising, some in what is now Ethiopia, others near modern-day South Africa. They may never have met, but their technologies, tools, and genetic footprints suggest they were part of a connected species, evolving together, slowly forming the mosaic that would become us. This wasn't the birth of humanity in a single place. It was a continental awakening, a gradual, scattered emergence of intelligence, culture, and identity 
across a vast and wild land. And Morocco, once overlooked, now stood at the center of it all, a beacon from the deep past, whispering the truth of where we began. The Morocco discovery didn't just change where we came from. It transformed our understanding of how we became who we are. It revealed a species not born in one cradle, but forged across an entire continent, in scattered groups, exchanging tools, ideas, and genes over thousands of years. Humanity wasn't a singular spark. It was a slow-burning fire, lit in many places, fanned by time, and carried across generations. This finding forces us to redraw the map of our origins and to accept that the journey to becoming human is far more complex, far more beautiful, than we ever imagined. From the sun-scorched rocks of Jebel Irhud to the genetic traces in our cells, we are connected to these ancient people. Their story is not separate from ours. It is ours. So next time you look in the mirror, remember, your face carries echoes of those early ancestors who walked the green plains of ancient Morocco. Hunters, thinkers, survivors. The first of their kind. The first of our kind. If this discovery fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore our other deep dives into the hidden past. Because sometimes, the most powerful truths lie buried just beneath our feet.